Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number. 172 and we are on page number 100 we are solving problems through the third test that you find beginning on page number 99 there are two more tests that we worked on already from the previous edition if you're interested in solving those exams those tests if you want to be interested in practicing them you will find the solutions to the problems that appeared in test number one from day number 61 through 70 and test number two from 71 through 80 all the problems from this fifth editions have been solved and you will find the solutions to all of them from day 1 through 80. Let's get going. We will do, we will do, we will solve. We will solve problem number 13 and 14. Let's take a look. Number 13. It's important that you have the book in front of you. It helps a lot because there is a lot of things, a lot, a lot of stuff that they talk about in the book. I don't, I don't, I don't give you the whole thing. I just give you the gist of it, so it helps to be able to read the entire thing verbatim. Number 13. We are given months. We are given months. January, February, March, April, May, and June. Six months we are given. We are given the temperature, which is expressed in degree Fahrenheit. I am I'm putting it here so that I have to keep putting degrees next to each number. That will be annoying. And we are told that in January, the average temperature was 38 degree Fahrenheit. In February, it was 35. In March, it was 42. April, it was 47. And then 53 in May. And by June, it was nice and warm, 61 degrees, balmy 61. And here are the, here's our dollar bill. The bills that we received in the mail for heating bills. In January we paid 72 dollars, February we paid 68 dollars, March was 59 dollars, April was 54 dollars, and then 66 dollars in May, and June we paid $59. Okay. Question, question they are asking here is very simple. Question simply is, based on these figures that we see here, what conclusion, what conclusion can we draw? I should not have put it so low because I don't have enough room now. Let's look at answer choice A. Let's read it together, shall we? Question number 13, we're going to read verbatim what the answer choice A says. In answer choice A, equal, they, they add up all the, all, the, all the dollar amount and they tell you that equals to the average rate of change. Equals average rate of change. Now that's absolute gobbledygook. Yes, that is a real word. That is a real word. Double D Go. It's hyphenated twice, which means nonsense. Answer choice A. Answer choice A, what it is trying to calculate. Answer choice A. Calculates The average, now in my notes I have average temperature, but it doesn't look like it's the temperature, it is the amount that they are adding, dollar amount. It is the dollar amount that they are adding, 68, just give me one second, I don't want to read, 67, 68, sorry, 70, yes, it's the dollar amount. 71.89, uh, 68.25, those are dollar amount. So, answer choice A calculates the average 
dollar spent per month. That's what it's saying. On such wise, a calculus, the average dollar spent per month, not, here's, here's the part that we have to pay attention to, it does not, on such wise, a, does not calculate, does not calculate the average rate of change. The average rate of change. Do you understand? Now, the question is, if we had to figure out, if somebody were to ask us the, to calculate the average rate of change, would you be able to do it? The question does not require it. The question simply requires us to recognize the fact that the calculation that they're doing there is, is going to calculate the average dollar amount, every dollar amount spent per month. It does not calculate what they're claiming. What they're claiming is that the calculation that we see on such wise calculates the average rate of change. It does not. Question is, if you had to calculate it, every rate of change, would you be able to do it? Let's read the answer choice A one more time. Yeah, that's all he said. It says that amount equals to average rate, average rate of change. That, that in itself is a nonsense. Do you know why? Average rate of change of what? Is it the average rate of change of temperature? Or it is the average, or is it the average rate of change of dollar amount? Those are two different concepts. Let's figure out how would we calculate average rate of change in temperature. If somebody were to ask us that, they're not asking us. But if somebody were to ask us, how would we do it? This is how you would do it. So keep in mind that now this is the dollar amount. Now we're calculating the average, average rate of change in temperature. Let's do it together. Let's see how we do it. Let's change the color. If the video takes a little bit longer, that's all right. Average rate of, average rate of change in temperature. Average rate of change in temperature which is what we're calculating here, would equal, let's erase this thing, how would we do it, do you, do you have any idea? Would equal the change in temperature, this, this symbol means change, or if you like, I can actually write it out. Change in temperature over the number of months. Watch what happens. Watch what happens, okay? What is the change in temperature? When we talk about the change in temperature, here we're talking about over the six month period, from the beginning till the end. So what is the change in temperature over the entire time period? Well, we ended up with 61 degrees. The last month, the average temperature was 61 degrees. In January, it was 38 degrees. That was the change in temperature. That is, that's the top part, over the six month period. Let's find out what that is, 61 minus 38. 61 minus 38, 11 minus 8 is 3, and this will become 5, and 5 minus 3 is 2. So it is 23 over 6. 23 six over 6, 23 is not a multiple of 6, so let's just estimate it, let's just pretend that it is 24. Let's just pretend that it is 24. And now 24 over 6 is 4 degrees. 4 degrees, what we're claiming here is that the average rate in change in temperature was 4 degrees per per month. You see, on the top we have degrees, here we have month. 4 degrees, This the, the unit is going to be 24 divided by 6 is 4 degrees per month. What does that mean? What that means is that, based on this figure, we can conclu conclude that the temperature rises as the season warms up, as we go from January to February to March, all the way up to June, the temperature rises on average, let's write it down, shall we? So that we can, we can understand it. Yes, we don't need this any of this figure anymore, I can erase it. So how do we read this thing? How do we read this thing? This is how it's read. It says, conclusion is that, conclusion is that, 
the temperature rose on average we have to qualify that this is on average on average by four degrees per month that's the conclusion and that is called the rate of change over the six months that we observed the temperature it changed it rose by four degrees per month why four degrees per month because because we had we had four degrees per month we're claiming here four degrees per month and we had six months period four times six is 24 degrees months are going to cancel out change was 24 degrees overall if you if you have the figures in front of you you will see that in january we begin with 38 degrees 38 plus 24 is to 62 degrees according to according to this calculation in june the average temperature was about 62 degrees in the figures that tell us it was 61 degrees which is close enough but this is only unstatistics or rather a statistic not unstatistic it's a, it's a statistics you know what statistics are statistics are something that do not necessarily exist in the real world for example for example if i should not erase the figures I should not have raised the figures because here are the temperatures. Temperatures were 38, 35, 42, 47, 53, and 61. Watch what happens. So what we're claiming is that on average, as we go progress from January to February to March and so forth, temperature goes up by 4 degrees on average. You have to say that. It goes up by 4 degrees on average. That does not necessarily mean that it ever actually did happen that way. For example, from January to February, it actually fell by 3 degrees. From February to March, it went up by 7 degrees. From March to April, it went up by 5 degrees. From April to May, it went up by 6 degrees. And from May to June, it went up by 9 degrees, or rather 8 degrees. But on average, it goes up by 4 degrees. Do you understand? It's like saying, it's like saying that you do the survey of all the families in the town, and you ask them how many children do you have, you add up all the total number of children that there are in the, in, the, in, the, in the town and you divide by the number of families in the town and you proudly tell me that in my town we have we have 2.3 kids per family per family in my town we have 2.3 kids per family but I doubt very much if we can actually find a family in real life which will have 2.3 kids. The statistics do not necessarily ex exist in real world. These are statistical phenomena, phenomena rather, plural, uh, but they do not, they may or may not exist. For example, if you tell me that the average, for, if you tell me that the average number of kids per family in my town is two, then there might be many families with exactly two kids. But 2.3 kids, I doubt very much if you're going to find any family like that. That's what's going on here. On average, it went up by four degrees per month, Whereas in reality, there was no such thing. There was no month where one month to next month it went up by exactly four months. Here it went down by three degrees, then it went up by seven degrees, then it went up by five degrees, six degrees, and eight degrees. It did not go up by exactly four degrees in any months. But that's what the average, average amount is. Do you understand? Answer choice A is not correct. Answer choice A is not calculating, is calculating the average uh, amount that you spend. Not the, average, not the rate of change. The rate of change you would do it like this. Let's look at answer choice B. Simply knowing, simply knowing what the right answer is, it's not sometimes enough. You also have to understand why the wrong answer is wrong. I really should not have raised the figures because I keep looking at it. Oh, I'm not going to rewrite them. I'm just going to simply, you have the notes in front of you. Answer choice B says that the most expensive, most expensive bill occurred in the coldest month. Now, if that statement is true, then that would be the right answer. But be fine. If you look at the, the figures there, you will find that the coldest month, coldest month was February. That's when we had the lowest average temperature 
of 35 degrees. But, but the highest bill, highest bill was in January. January we paid seventy two dollars. That was the highest bill. The highest bill was in January, despite the fact that the coldest month was February. So that statement is not correct. It's making a claim, it's making an assertion that cannot be uh, supported by the figures that we have. Let's look at C. Let's look at answer choice C. Answer choice C says July bill July bill will be will be less than thirty-eight dollars. So how the bloody hell do we know that? How do we know that? The answer is we do not. There is no way for us to be able to make that kind of assertion. There is no way at all. July bill will be less than $38, to which the answer simply would be, how the bloody hell do you know that? Answer is, you do not. We do not. It doesn't support. There is nothing in the figures that, that leads us to believe that come July, the bill is going to be $38, or less than $38 for that matter. Let's look at D. D says, D says that if you were to make scatter plot, if you were to make scatter plot, if you're going to make a scatter plot, here's your x-axis, here's your y-axis, you have to determine what goes on the x-axis, what goes on the y-axis. And what goes on the x-axis is always the independent variable. And what goes on the y-axis is a dependent variable. And this says that it says that dollar amount, dollar amount of bill. depends on the temperature outside which is a reasonable claim how much your dollar amount is going to be for the heating heating bill it depends of course how cold it is outside the lower the temperature higher the bill that's how it goes higher the temperature lower the bill we're talking about the heating bill right now do you understand so here we're saying the dollar amount depends on dollar amount depends on it depends on what does it depend on it depends on the temperature so what depends on the dollar amount depends on dollar amount is the dependent variable what does it depend on it depends on the temperature our temperature is the independent variable now is that what the answer is that what the statement D says because if that's what it says then it's correct but it has to be because we rule out all the others it says if the homeowner wanted to make a scatter plot of this of his data, he should put temperature on the x-axis. There you go. Temperature is the independent variable. It should go on the x-axis. Here we will put our temperature, and here we will put the dollar amount. And the dollar amount on the y-axis. The correct answer is D. And we know now why we ruled out A, B, and C. Let's look at the next question. Question number 14. Question number 14. We are given heights of 10 players. We are given heights of 10 players. Let's put them on the blackboard first and I'm going to put them vertically instead of putting them horizontally. Here's what's given to us. 67, 68, 65, 68, 62. Let's put a demarcation after the 5 so we can keep this. Otherwise, there'll be too much in a, in a row. 71, 73, 75, 76, 75. See, this is why I put the line there so that it's easier for with our eyes to be able to see if we make a mistake. 72, 75, and 76. This line has no significance. You understand? I just wanted to keep the 5 and the 5. 
Now the first thing we have to do before we can analyze these statistics, these this heights of the 10 player, before we can draw any kind of conclusion from these 10 players as to what their average is, average height is, what's the median height, what's the mode of these 10 heights, before we can do any of that, they have to be arranged in order. So let's, let's do it together, okay? Here's what we're going to do. As we write, we're going to cross them out. Arrange in order, either in ascending order or descending order. We're going to arrange them in ascending order, increasing order, starting from the sm smallest one, going to the highest one. The smallest one is 62. Then we have 65. Then we have 67. And then we have 268s. We have 268s. Oh, there you go. 268, these are all unique. These are all unique numbers. They don't repeat. This is our mode. What's the definition of mode? What's the definition of mode? I'm not going to put it on the blackboard. If you want to write it down, you're welcome to. Mode is the most frequently appearing figure in the data set. Whichever, whichever happens most often is called mode. Here, the mode of these 10 observations is 68. So if there is an answer choice which tells you some other rubbish, that answer choice is wrong. Let's carry on. 71, 71, and then 72, then 73, and then 5, and a 6. So now they are arranged in order. Let's look at answer choice A. Actually, let's not, let's not look at the answer choice A. In a question like this, it's always good to play around with the answer choices. Don't go in strict order. Let's see what the answer choice A says, actually. Number 14. The mode is less than the median, and the median is less than the mean. You see that, that you don't want to start with this thing, because the only way you can, you can figure, figure out whether answer choice A is correct or no, not, is to actually do all the calculations. And you don't want to do all the calculations if you don't have to. Let's start with something simple. Let's start with something simple. Answer choice B says median median is 68. No, it is not the median. It is not the median that is 68. It is not the median that is 68. It is the mode. Right here, it is the mode. They appear twice. Answer choice B is wrong. Let's see what the answer choice C says. Answer choice C says Answer choice C says, because, there are 10 players, there is no median. This person has this notion, this person somehow has heard from somewhere, that median is the middle number after the numbers have been arranged in order. And that is the correct definition. I'm going to say it one more time. If you want to write it down again, what's the definition of median? Median is the middle number after the numbers have been arranged either in ascending order or descending order. That is the complete and thorough definition of a median. What's the median? It's the number after they've been arranged in either ascending order or descending order. For example, if I give you three numbers here, if I give you three numbers here, three, nine, and five, what's the median here? Well, three, nine, and five, we have to first put them in order. Three, five, and nine, median is five. But what if we had four numbers? What if we had four numbers, three, nine, five, and four, let's say? What's the median now? According to this guy, there is no median because we have even number of numbers, because 10 happens to be an even number. There is, nothing, there is nothing in the middle. There are two on this side and two on that side. There is nothing in the middle. That's what they are saying here. That is nonsense. When we have even number of numbers, listen very carefully, when we have even number of numbers, first thing we have to do, as always, is to arrange them in order first. So we're going to have three, then a four, then a five, and a nine. And once we have arranged them, the median is the average of the two in the middle. This is your median. So median in this case, median of three, nine, four, and five, the median here, would be the average of 4 and 5, which is 4 and a half. Which is what we have to do here. Let's find out what the median is. But that statement is definitely wrong. Of course there is a median. Just because there are even number of numbers, that does not mean that there is no median. This is absolute nonsense. Let's keep, let's keep on going, shall we? Let's keep on going. 
Answer choice D says, answer choice D says, the range is equal to 9 inches. And how did they arrive at that? They're going to explain to us that the range is the difference between the highest observation and the lowest observation. And they are correct. That is what the range is. It is the difference of the highest observation and the lowest observation. But, the but part is that, number 14, right? Number 14 answer choice D. It says the range of height is 9 inches, 76 minus 67. 76 minus 67. That's what, that's 76 minus 67. But 76 minus 67 is 9. But are they the highest and the lowest values? Let's, let's, let's find out, shall we? But well, the highest value is very easy. I can I can clearly see this is the highest value, right there. But that is correct. But the lowest value is 62, not 67. The correct range, correct range here, correct range would be 76 minus 62, which is 14, not 9. 9 is wrong. The range here is 14, not 9. Which is why answer choice D is wrong. But there you go. I wonder what the right answer is. Now, if you were taking the real exam, if you were taking the real exam, you wouldn't waste your time trying to figure out whether or not what they're claiming in answer choice A is actually correct. Because you have to do a lot of calculation. But here, since we're not taking the real exam, for learning purposes, we can analyze the claim that is made in A. Let's see what claim is made in A, okay? What happened to my... We're going to cross, we're going to raise B, C, and D because we need the room. That's what happens. Answer choice A says mode. This is answer choice A. It says mode, which we know is 68, is less than a median. It's less than a median. Let's find out what median is. Median. It's going to be the average of the median here. Median here is going to be the average of the fifth and the sixth number. Fifth and the sixth, we take their average. The fifth value is 68. The sixth value is 71. And you divide that by 2. 8 plus 1 is 9. And 6 plus 7 is 13. 139 over 2. 139 over 2. How do we divide 139 by 2? It's very simple. It's very simple. How many 2's does 1 have? 1 has no 2's. That 1 goes and joins the 3 and becomes a 13. 13 has 6 2's. After 6 2's are 12. 6 2's are 12. After we take away 12 from the 13, we have a remainder of 1. That 1 goes and joins the 9 and becomes a 19. And 19 has 9 2's. 9 2's are 18 with the remainder of 1. And that remainder of 1 needs to be divided by this 2. So the median is 69 and a half, which makes perfect sense, which makes perfect sense if we think about it, because we knew, because we knew that 140 divided by 2, 140 divided by 2 is exactly 70. If 140 divided by 2 is exactly 70, then it stands to reason that 139 divided by 2 should be 69 and a half. So that's your median, 69 and a half. Is mode less than the median? The answer is yes. The mode is 68 and 68 is indeed less than 69. So that statement that they're making is correct. What else, what other claim do they make in answer choice A? We need the room. Is there any other claim they make there? It says the mode is less than the median, which is correct, because the mode is 68. The median we just found out was 69 and a half, so mode is indeed less than the median. And then they go on to then they go on to say median is less than the mean. Median is less than the mean. Median. Let's do it on the top here. Median is less than the mean. A medium we already calculated, it was 69 and a half. It's less than the mean. What's the mean? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out the mean. And you're going to have to pay attention here, okay? Watch. 
we're going to calculate the mean together. Watch what happens. Forget the 60s. Let me rewrite the figures here. Let me rewrite the figures because it's getting too crowded. 62, 65, 67, 68, 68, 71, 72, 73, 75, and 76. And right now we are trying to figure out the mean. That's what happens, okay? Of course, how do we figure out the mean? Of course, we add up all the figures and divide by 10. But if that's what we were about to do on the blackboard, then they why make a fuss. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to find a quick and dirty way of calculating the mean. We're going to figure out the exact value of mean without actually doing all the work. Watch what happens. What I want you to do is, what I want you to do is, for the time being, ignore the 60s. Just pretend the 60s don't exist. Just ignore them. So we have 2, 5, 7, 8, and 8. And if I were doing it myself, I wouldn't have crossed it out by hand and I wouldn't have wasted my time rewriting them. I'm doing it for your benefit. So here we go. 7 plus 8 is 15. 15 plus 5 is 20. And 2 plus 8 is 30. One more time. 7 plus 5, 7 plus 8 is 15. 15 plus 5 is 20. And 2 plus 8 is 10. 20 plus 8, 10 is 30. That part is done. That part is done. Now, the 70s here. Don't worry about them right now. Don't worry about them. We're going to pretend. We're just going to figure out what the unit is. Add up to 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. Are we ready? Here we go. Here we go. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. And then 7. So this is 17. This is 17. And if we're going to pretend See, we are ignoring 60. We are not ignoring the... We cannot... We, we were, we, here we ignore 60. So here also we have to ignore 60. If we ignore the 60s, if we subtract 60 from everywhere, then these figures would have been 11, 12, 13, 15, and 16. That's 50 more. That's 50 more. And this is 30. This is 30. 30 plus 17 plus 50 that gives you 7 and 97 97 divided by 10 because there are 10 players is 9.7 but that's not the average height the real average height the real average height the real average height is not 9.7 it is 60 plus 9.7 why 60 plus? Because we've been ignoring the 60s. This was 60, 62, we pretended it was 62. This was 68, we pretended it was 8. This was 72, we pretended it was 12. This was 75, we pretended it was 15. And we first added up the unit digit, which added up to 17. Then we added up to 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That's where this 50 comes from. Let me put them in the circle so you can see them. This 50 that you see here, this 50 that you see there, is the sum of these tens. There are five of them. So we ignored the 60s. Why did we ignore the 60s from every every figure? To make the calculation simpler. And then at the end we make the adjustment. So whatever the average turns out to be here, 9.7, in reality we know the real average actually is 60 plus 9.7 because we ignore 60 from every observation. So the average is, average is 60, 60, 69.7 rather. 69.7 because 60 plus 9.7 69.7 and what claim are they making let me let me finish it up it's been taking too long the claim that we're making here is that the median the claim that they made was this let me put it in the top here the claim the second claim that was made was the median is less than the mean but we just found out that the mean is 69.7 is six and the median we found out was 69 and a half 69.5 is 69.5 is 69.5 less than 69.7 the answer is yes both the claims that are made in answer choice a are correct both of the claims can be supported by the figures that we have at our hand and therefore the answer is A. 
but you do not start out with answer choice A. If you start, you would start out with answer choice A. Answer choice A would be an excellent idea to start out with if you decide to make your life miserable during the exam. If you want to go through hell, that will be an excellent choice to start out with. Otherwise, start with a simpler answer. And when we're dealing with a question that will deal with mean, me, median, and mode, the simplest thing first to start out with is mode, because there is very little calculation to figure out the mode. Mode is just the number that appears most often. You can see it right away. Cross out the answer choice that don't work. Then do the median. Again, that's very straightforward. Is the middle number after they are arranged in order. And if there are even number of numbers, just take the average of the two middle ones. Again, it doesn't require too much calculation. Cross out the answer choices based on that. And if you keep doing that, you will find that in most cases, you do not have to do all the calculation. Like here, we did not have to do any of this calculation. Why? Because we were able to cross out answer choice B, C, and D very easily. Answer has to be A. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.